Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. I'm Alex Payton. And I'm Dr. Oliver Bridgman. <laughs> Coming up this week, we've got some top secret handlebar tech, a bike with no chain, new tyres, and an aluminium or aluminium. Aluminium. Super bike. And our main talking point this week is going to be dropper posts on road bikes. First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. Well, actually, we're going to look at the one from a couple of weeks ago because basically I just forgot it. Yes, do um, it. So this was the Le Monde 8 and whether people thought it was hot or not. Turns out 83% of people voted it hot, which means, well, according wait, to the poll. Wait, so that's it. It's, it's yeah. hot. It's hot. I agree with them. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, so the poll from last week where we thought we'd ask whether too much data was making cycling dangerous. Turns out 70% of people said, no way. Is this some kind of joke? 70% of people don't agree with Chris Froome. Again. Again. Mm. Chris Froome in his unpopular opinion. It's yeah. becoming a theme. <laughs> it is becoming a theme. Um, yeah. Anyhow, on to this week's main talking yes. point. Drop a seat posts. Yeah. Now, many of you will have watched Milan San Remo at the weekend, um, which I keep calling San Remo, but a lot of people in the comments yeah. keep correcting me and saying it's San Remo. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, I'm doing my best. But uh, it was spectacular. Oh, I watched it on GCM Plus with Matej Mohoric descending the Poggio at speeds that no one else could match or, or dared even to do, and therefore took a spectacular win. But what was all the more interesting about it was the yeah. fact that Mohoric used a dropper post. First time we've ever seen this in a road race. Well, it, well they've been used before. Oh. They, they have been used before. So in the Giro d'Italia many years ago, um, Ivan Basso used a dropper post. Quite famously on his Cannondale. Oh, okay. Uh, but but they've uh, they've never really been used much no. since then. However, we did predict this. You did. Yes. Mostly you. About a year ago. Yeah. So we made a video showing what you could how you could use a drop post. We're going to be dining out on this oh, for a for long, a long time, time, I think, because yeah. we can basically take full credit for Mahorich's win. <laughs> and we're going to. Yeah. <laughs> Now we've seen loads of people commenting different things on it, so let's clear it up. So the advantages of a dropper seat post. First thing, it lowers your centre of gravity. Secondly, it allows you to get into a more aerodynamic position. Yeah. So by lowering your whole body close to the ground, it's better, isn't it? Yeah, like, you know, that's why Formula One cars are so low down. Yeah. Lower centre of gravity, you can corner faster. Um, and well, having tried it our, ourselves, and we'll put a link to that video in the description so you can check it out if you've not seen it. You know, we've found that it's you don't quite get as low as you do in a super tuck. No. So in a straight line, you're not quite as fast as you would be in a super tuck. But the advantage is that it's legal, yeah. and the super tuck is banned. Illegal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and the other thing is that when you're cornering, it's much better cornering on a drop post because your your centre of gravity is lower, but your weight distribution is still good on the bike, so you feel nice and stable and secure. In a super tuck position, they're terrible for cornering. Oh, your weight's right at the front, isn't it? Yeah, your really weight twitchy. distribution's all wrong. Yeah. You've got no weight on the back wheel, all on the front wheel. You can't corner, and it's it's unsafe, and that's the reason why it was it was banned largely. Um, Another uh, advantage, I've got one. Yeah. So using the dropper seat pose means you can get you know lower, more aerodynamic, but also at the same time you can pedal in a fairly secure way. Yes, yeah. rather than sort of pedaling like Chris Froome on yeah. on the on the top tube. Like, yeah. like he used to do. It does not look comfortable. You can pedal yeah. much more effectively when sat on a lower drop post. And that's something that we saw Mahoric actually doing. He he actually tweaked the, the drop on his post yeah. so that he could still pedal hard out of corners, which is something we saw him doing on the Poggio. Mm. Now this kind of leads us to another question of, are we going to see loads of pros trying to use a drop a seat post? Because Mahoric said that he might have broken cycling. Well, I think even if they wanted to for specific applications, because you're presumably not going to want it all the time, but even if they wanted to, they couldn't. Because yeah. at present, if you want a dropper post, you need a round seat post. And hardly any bikes that are used by pros in the Pro Peloton have round seat posts anymore. Marita Sculpture, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, one of the few ones. Yeah. Canyon Ultima. Yeah, maybe um, like Ridley Helium. Yeah. As well. But I mean, I can't. I'm struggling to think of anything else. That lots does. of manufacturers have kind of moved away from that traditional round seat post for aero shaped ones, and you just can't get a drop of yeah, seat. Yeah, plus see. also like the, the, the Canyon Ultimate. I mean, that, that's a, a design that's been around for quite a while now. Yeah. You'd expect that there's an update coming to that, and that, oh, yeah. I'm 
gonna guess that that probably doesn't have a, a round seat post. Probably a pretty good guess. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> but what about some of the disadvantages of using a dropper seat post? So aside from the fact that you're limited to using a round post, I guess next one's weight. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're looking at, at with a setup like Mahoric used, probably adding around 250 grams on top of the standard weight of the of the bike. That said, he used quite a light post, didn't he? Like, yeah, so I think the one that he used is a Fox Transfer SL. Yeah. Um, this weighs like 327 grams, to be precise. I acted like I didn't know then, didn't I? <laughs> um, so that's considerably lighter than a lot of the different dropper seat posts. Yeah, I mean, at most dropper posts, rule of thumb, you're looking around 500 grams. Yeah. But if we take sort of the Mahorich setup yeah. and, and then you know apply that, that, that weight difference that's going to make, while you wouldn't want to lug it up a climb on a summit finish in a pro bike race, because yeah. every little bit yeah. counts, it's still going to have not that much impact. So even on a climb like Alpe d'Huez, we know from our own experiments we've done, yeah. it, it's going to be worth around a watt. So it's not literally nothing. It's not it? much, yeah. no. Okay, so we know dropper seat posts are heavier than a normal seat post, but there is still an advantage to using them in lots of different situations. So, I don't know, where do you think we're going to see them used? Well, I guess like any kind of mountainous race or stage, there's an argument, isn't there? Because any any time you've got a descent, that's an opportunity to, well, out descend your your competition yeah. and or force them then to expend more energy by pedaling harder to catch back up with you, yeah. uh, or or just putting them under pressure. So that, big risks. Yeah, and that can yeah. cause them to make mistakes. So you think of uh, Vincenzo Nibali when he basically won the Giro by putting pressure on Stephen Kreuzweig on the yeah. descent of the Col de Agnel in the in, in the Giro a few years ago, and um, took pink as a result. Yeah. And uh, well, speaking of speaking of the Giro, yeah. the route this year looks absolutely incredible. I'm oh, so excited. Actually, I'm so actually. excited about yeah. it. But there's there's just looking at that. There's several stages um, where a drop post could be advantageous because there's a descent not long before the before the finish. So yeah. I think we're looking at um, stages 12, 14, and 16. In, oh. Instantly stand out. I mean, this all sounds great, but how can I actually watch the Giro? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked, Alex. See, if you have a GCN Plus subscription, you'll be able to watch the Giro d'Italia live, on demand, and ad-free. Plus, there's highlights, analysis, premium documentaries, and much, much more. It really is the best place to watch cycling. Wow, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. It, um, it pays the bills, you know, it pays for Ollie's hairdresser bills as well. You have actually had a haircut this week, haven't you? I, I did it just for this joke. <laughs> yeah, fair. I mean, it looks pretty fresh, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> so this seems like a useful bit of tech, which we're going to see fit to maybe some bikes for races or certain stages, but is it something that you think we're going to see more of? It all depends on demand, doesn't it? Is that what's ultimately going to drive it? But it... It's going to have to be something that I think manufacturers design into their bikes. And there's kind of two ways you can go about that. Either we see a return to, to more round seat posts, yeah. which isn't inconceivable because we've seen a return to threaded bottom brackets. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, yeah, it's yeah, a thing yeah. where manufacturers have gone, actually, no, the old idea was actually better. And they've gone back to that. Yeah. Or um, we see some really funky designs where you still have an aero bladed seat post, but somehow yeah. they make that telescopic. So it's just been more proprietary parts. Yes, it? but oh, it, God. it's a significantly harder engineering challenge to make something that's non round telescopic mm. it's, it's just a hard thing to do so who knows i'm intrigued about this so that's our view on the whole subject and we want to know your thoughts on this so we're going to have a poll so head over to the gcn app and you can vote on this and let us know your thoughts on drop a seat post yeah would are you they going to take off yeah, as well yeah well, just would you want one on yeah. your bike i think that's what we need to establish yeah do you want one yeah you've decided it for us thanks <laughs> Time now for hot tech, and we're going to start with some hot tyre tech, thanks to Pirelli, mm. who've just brought out an updated new version of their 4S mm. all-weather all tyre. Yeah, so quite a few changes here. Most notable is the switch of the compound of the tyre. So they're using the same compound now as what they do in their P0 race tyres. So a little bit more towards a summer compound, presumably to make this tyre a little bit more of a do-it-all, all-seasons kind of tyre. In addition to that, the tread pattern, or the width of the tread, is now wider than before to account for the fact that lots of people and manufacturers are using a wider rim. We've also got a revised tread pattern, which I think Pirelli are saying uses sipes down the, down the edge of it. Yeah, we talked about sipes mm. 
in my um, tire tire yeah. video. So I think it's to do with helping change the temperature of the compound, get allows a bit of movement in the tread. Mm. And so there's another update as well. Is well available in two different widths options at the moment. You've got a 26 and a 28, and Pirelli say the more width options are coming soon. And there's going to be a tubeless version on the way. Yeah. Uh, other cool fact I heard about mm. these tires. Yeah. They're the first uh, tire, for, well, bike tire that Pirelli's making exclusively in Italy. Oh, yeah. Because they've just, they've just, well, they've got a new expanded Pirelli Mega Base to yeah. make bike tires in Italy. So, production nice. Oh, there. one more bit of information people might want to know. Um, £61.99 is the UK retail price. All right, what hmm. about euros? Uh, conversion rates out of order. About though. dollars. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, exchange rates. Thanks, if, we can get, if we can get the price in euros and dollars, we'll put it on the screen. Now, it wouldn't be hot tech without some crowdfunding, would it? Yeah. And Alex has found an absolute corker. So this is an e-bike that doesn't have a chain. Yeah. Or a belt or anything. Well, it does have something. It's hydraulic driven. Tell me more. Yes, yeah, so this is called the Oyo bike. It's obviously a concept bike. It's being crowdfunded it's on Indiegogo. So think along the lines of your normal urban commuter bike, so that kind of shape, flat handlebar, 700c wheels, and then you've got your traditional e-bike motor system based at the cranks, yeah? Mm. All sounded fairly familiar? Yeah. Yeah, and then in order to get the drive from the cranks to the rear wheel, you've got a closed loop hydraulic system. So where the cranks are, which are being turned by a combination of the rider and the e-bike motor, you're turning a pump, which is pumping hydraulic fluid through a system of hoses to the rear wheel, which then turns what's referred to as a motor unit. So the hydraulic fluid is turning that, which then drives the rear wheel. That fluid is then pumped back to the start, and it cycles round and round and round. It's called a closed loop hydraulic system. It sounds intriguing. It is intriguing because you've got minimal amounts of maintenance, fairly sort of fit and forget. The system is actually completely removable, they say. So the idea is that if it ever does have a problem with the hydraulic system, you can just take it off and get that bit fixed rather than I don't know, carting your whole bike off. So how do you have gears, though? Um, well, that is a good concept. So It's not like it's got any gears. Yeah, well, the manufacturers or the, the people building this concept bike are saying that it's got all the gears, but also no gears, which sounded very confusing to start with. So imagine on your normal bike, you've got your hardest gear and your easiest gear, yeah? And then you've got steps in between them, maybe like eight, nine, 10, 11, how many gears yeah, like, have you got? Cogs. Yeah, yeah it's it's cogs. cogs. But on this hydraulic system bike, you've got your easiest gear and your hardest gear, and almost like an infinite amount of adjustment between those two points. You haven't got set steps. It's like a sort of smooth linear adjustment to the gears, which means you effectively like got- a, Like a sort of volume button on a mixing desk. Yeah, so it can just adjust between it. So presumably there's a system of valves within the hydraulic system which adjusts how much fluid is moving around. It is a pretty clever concept. I it's think. an interesting idea. Yeah. I can't wait. To, well, hopefully it comes to fruition and we can actually see what. Well, according to the crowdfunding campaign, they're starting to manufacture these things in like a couple of weeks. Um, it's got a 400 watt hour battery, claimed range 80 kilometers or so, but it is quite heavy. It's about 25 kilos. Um, so according to their crowdfunding page, um, initial backers and pledgers can get a bike for like just under two thousand dollars, but if you miss out on that, retail price is about three and a half, I think. So yeah, a bit pricey, but interesting concept. Cool. Next up in hot tech, we've got something new from Shimano here, where they seem to have filed a patent for a new handlebar design, which kind of incorporates the shift button within the handlebar itself. Yeah, this is something that we saw posted by our friends over on Road CC, and it actually, well, it, it differs from the handlebar that you've yeah. shown on the channel recently. The Vibe Evo. That does have little holes to accommodate shifter buttons, but this makes it a bit more practical and a bit more kind of easy to work on in that yeah. it's a separate little, well, like, cover that can yeah. be removed to allow you to gain access to the button and then pop the button in and then replace it with yeah, the cover. Yeah, I guess it's different from the satellite shifts or sprint buttons which are kind of mounted externally on handlebars and underneath a tape. So it kind of, it's going to make a bit more of a sleek finish and slim the design down a little bit. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the little shifters on the handlebars when yeah. you get them on. And also they can be used for other things. If you reprogram uh, them with the like the issue bat, yeah. you could have one controlling a dropper post. Oh. God, this guy, you're ahead of the game. Oh. All right, then we'll be claiming that for next yeah. year's race victory I mean, somewhere. I mean, we should be yeah. doing lottery numbers and everything. <laughs> I think we're on a roll. I, I really am feeling, I'm feeling good. 
Right, final bit of hot tech this week, and we've got a new aluminium superbike from Specialized. It's the Alley Sprint. Yeah. I mean, they're claiming this is like next level yeah. aluminium. Um, so the Alley Sprint, you you may be familiar with it. Um, it was Specialized top end aluminium bike, kind of like a, a cool a cool concept in a way. Yeah. It's sort of an aerodynamic aluminium bike that's designed for kind of crit racing and that sort of thing. Because an aluminium bike makes a lot of sense in those applications. Yeah. If you're Loads of be crashes. Crashing a yeah. lot. It's a bit more robust to impacts than a carbon frame. It's kind of cool. Yeah, some big headline stats they're claiming here. So they're, the words from Specialized are that this is 41 seconds faster over 40 kilometers compared to the previous model. Partly, I think a lot of this is down to the fact we've got fully integrated cables and also a completely revised head tube shape, which Specialized are saying uses some pretty impressive technology to change the shapes and the wall thickness of the frame. Yeah, like the hydro forming techniques are, are pretty impressive what they're doing with aluminium here because I think when they're painted as well, yeah. the, the untrained eye, they don't look like they're aluminium bikes. The That's welding true. and everything's really neat. It's really clever, but I was surprised they didn't say what the speed difference over 40 kilometers is compared to the tarmac. <laughs> yeah, because... It'd be I, interesting to know, wouldn't well, it? Well, I don't know. I think the fact that they, ha they, they must have tested it, yeah. but the fact that they haven't published that in their marketing materials for this bike maybe suggests to me that it's maybe quite close Maybe might even be faster. It might be. Who In knows? which case, like you wouldn't publish it, would you? Because yeah. everyone would just buy the aluminium one. Actually, on the subject of you talking about the welds, really interesting design. This is that the bottom bracket shell is incorporated into the down tube, like saying about hydroforming. So at the bottom bracket area, Specialized is saying it's really increased the stiffness because there's only welds for the seat tube and where the chain stays meet. It's quite a clever design to incorporate that round into the down tube, and uh, yeah, I, I like that. It's good to see just technology still happening with regards to aluminium bike frames, and not just everyone focused purely on carbon, as we've spoken yeah. about before. Most of the bikes still sold in the world are aluminium. Yeah. Right, that's that. More hot tech next week, then. Oh, before we go, though, haven't we got some rather cool new stuff in the shop? Oh, you better believe it we have. We have got, check this out, we've got a new jacket, as some new joggers, and I've got to say, the person modelling the joggers, whoa, yeah. this guy knows what he's doing, doesn't he's he? A, he's a fine figure of a man, as yeah. he uh, stumbles out of the gin bar there in the background. <laughs> yeah, I was just having a little midday drink. Yeah. Um, nothing wrong with that. What do I know? I'm just a men's fitness model. Um, so head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork if you want to get yourself some cool GCN swag and, well, look as good as Ollie and myself. It's time now for the best bike shop in the world, according to you this week, uh, where you submit bike shops, and this is all about championing bike shops. These are the core of the cycling community. We're gonna shout about them, we're gonna celebrate them. So Alex, yeah, which is the best bike shop in the world this week? This week, well, it's submitted by someone called Will Newton. They say they can never walk past, keep pedaling in Manchester's northern quarter without popping their head in. I used, to, I used to frequent the northern quarter a lot. Oh, did you? As a student, yeah. They say the window art is one thing, the bikes inside are another. For adventure lovers like me, there aren't many places better than this. Included are some details in the photos about the carousel. Gosh, have a look. So you can check it out in the area. Well, look at the window art, actually. That's, that's cool, isn't it? That is looking good. Don't that normally cool. see that sort of stuff in bike I like shops. The, the, the brickwork reclaimed building reflection in the background, in, you can see there. Oh, it's very edgy, isn't it? Typical of the Northern Quarter. Yeah. I'm yeah. just looking at our website as well, so we've got things, we've got all the different bikes, we've got custom builds, workshop, uh, wheel building. There's also a section called Good Stuff, which is all like the accessories and basically all the good stuff you mm. spend your money on. I'd imagine that they probably have a wide stock of like waterproof, jackets and, and rain capes in Manchester. and mud guards because yeah. it rains all the time in Manchester, like literally every day. Yeah, um, well, best bike shop in the world this week. Big shout out to them. Hats off from us. Yeah, if you're in Manchester and you need a rain cape, head over there. <laughs> they also do bikes as and well. And wet lube. <laughs> Lots of wet lube. Lots of wet lube. Yeah, yeah. my favourite. <laughs> Time now for our favourite bit of the show, the Bike Vault, where you submit images of your bikes in the GCN app, and then we and you guys vote on them to see if they're nice or super nice. So without further ado, the most super nice bike on the GCN app last week, what was it? Um, well, it was this from oh. GCN Espanol, which is Luke Plapp's Pinarello um, Dogma F. Right, right. I'm, I'm not saying that's... 
I think it is a super nice bike, but it's not allowed a super nice based on that photo. It's just cropped the bike out. Rubbish. And it's, it's got Sabas in it. What? Yeah, I was going to say, it's like an own goal. But yeah, it's Luke Plapp's bike. Yeah. Australian well, national champ. I mean, it is a cool bike. It's a cool I, bike. I actually did a pro bike on that. We've got it coming out soon. Mm. Um, so just one super nice vote behind that bike was this, which is a Cervelo. Chester H. Yeah. So this That is, is very nice, isn't it? Yeah, you know, this is an actual real life caring human. It's got the bike. new Ultegra on it as well, the 12 speed Ultegra. I, yeah, we had this last week, so many bikes with the new Ultegra on. Where are I don't people, know where getting, people it are getting it from? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. You know, like the, the pro teams can't get hold of yeah. it. Yeah. Well, there you oh, go. I like this bike. That's gonna, very nice. Super nice. That is, that's a very nice bike. Um, so, first up, who have we got? Lim Darrell. Yeah. With a Factor 02 VAM. What do you Ooh. make of that? I, do, I like that. I kind of I like the sort of oil slick yeah. kind of look to the the frame paint. Yeah. And it's very. I mean, he's ticked all the boxes there. Look how perfectly aligned the wheels I are. I like the um, hubs and, and the tyre logos. Oh, come on, super nice. Easy. Oh, well, super nice that. Uh, Next Miguel up. Levin. Miguel Levin. Miguel Levin. Yeah. With a BMC Time Machine Road from 2020. Oh, incredible oh. backdrop. Look at that place. Look at that that red is really popping on that frame, isn't it? That is. Although, do you know what? Go on, it's at a slightly jaunty angle. Look out, look at that, look at that dirt, look at that grime on the chainstay. Well, I'm gonna have to zoom in on this. Not allowing that, nice. No? Nah, no. Nice. Lovely backdrop though, is that Westbury? Um, that looks like Doncaster. Oh, actually, yeah, similar. Lakeside at Doncaster. Mm. Next, next one in is from Sukarnos. Yeah. Um, Sukarnos, giant TCR advanced SL. Oh, another good bike. Sunlight popping on this as well, a nice bit of Bit of a chimney though. And it's in smallsy bigs. Yeah, and wheels not aligned. Nice. Yeah, nice. Nice. Sorry, sorry, it's just a nice. Toby Coates, Look Madison, oh, 875. Toby Coates, he lives around the corner from it, me. He what, yeah, he, I think, yeah. No, he actually does. Does he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he thinks I'm joking. Um, look, what is this? It's Madison. a look 875 Madison. It's outside the Geraint Thomas uh, Velodrome where we did our Junior Hour record video last week. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hasn't got many views that video, but yeah. it's been good. Go and watch it if Fastest you Fastest schoolboy in the world. Yeah, that's a claim to fame. Mm. Um, uh, I like this. Uh, it looks like it needs the chimney cutting off it. Maybe it's a new bike. I think we can go super nice on that one. We get a super nice, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, go on, we'll super nice that. You could fit a dropper post to that as well, because it's got a round <laughs> post. I think that's speed to get around the bankings. Amazing. Uh, on the track, dropping in. Max LG, Canyon Tobal CF. What the hell? Oh, oh, I picked this out. Because um, I wasn't sure. I know it's a mountain bike, don't get angry. Um, is that Hank's bike? Is it? Is Parked it in Connor's garden. Next to Connor's bench. <laughs> this, is why, this is why I picked it out. Yeah. Is, it, is it a giant bench or is it a small, small bike? It's a nice, that's what I it mean, is. It's a, it's a nice, that's for sure. Peter Spiker's next with his single speed project. Oh, I picked this out to redeem myself. Yeah. Like to see this thing. Let's have a look at this. Wow. That is seriously smart. I love those Veloflex tires. Yeah, so this cool. is cool. I, uh, it's a, a massive. Um, I mean, that has got to be a super nice every day of the week. It is, isn't it? Even on a bank holiday, that's a super nice. Oh. Um, yeah, I love the, the polished frame. That finish on it is incredible. It, that is, I'll tell it's you what, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm lost like for words. Yeah. It's gold chain it. as well. Oh, look, look at that, that yeah. Uh, yeah, super nice. Super nice. Easy. I think that was our last one. Oh, no, week. it's not. Because Connor Dunn oh, has God, a new yeah. bike as oh, well. Does. How did I forget this? What do you make of this? Let me have a look. I've got this on his Instagram. Oh, yeah. We had to get off piste to get this. Right, firstly. Yeah. Right. What are the colours? I don't even know what colour it is. So. You can customise your, your Orbea when you when you choose it. I think um, we've done pretty well. I think we've got gone for a very similar classic. Sensible choices. Team colours. On the Maya, matches the kit. Yeah, on the Maya Creator. Less yeah. is more. Hmm. Connor's thrown every single colour of the rainbow at that. And more. Yeah. And colours that didn't even know existed. He's invented new colours. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, it's pretty unicorn, isn't it? Um, so we did actually have to go onto his own personal Instagram here just to troll him. And um, we've got a few comments. One from you with yeah. a little unicorn and a rainbow. And then the little poo emoji. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, Stepha Spokes, big fan of the channel, yep. has also commented saying, this looks like something my 10-year-old daughter would design, which I'm inclined to agree with. Fair comment, yeah. yeah. I also like the fact that Connor's bike is so big, 
he's unable to get the whole bike in the picture. <laughs> That's a it wide like angle extends lens. Extends beyond yeah. the frame. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm it's a nice from me. That's for it's sure. It's a nice. Yeah, I'm disappointed that no one's commented saying like, "Here's a picture of Connor's fence and his new gate." Yeah, <laughs> we're not we're not angry. We're disappointed. Aren't yeah. We? yeah. Anyway, um, Steth- nice. Stether spokes. If you are watching, send us a cake and also we're we having a snack so we yeah. for ages. So anyway, that's all. That's it for the bike voice week. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the show. And uh, if you have, you know what to do. Help support the channel. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. And we'll see you next one. I've got to go try and do a thousand watts now. Oh, God. Good luck with that. I know. I'm going to go and put my feet up. Hmm. Yeah. Right, see ya.